coming up on First at Five, we give you the phase by phase of today's solar eclipse. And a UF student charged with killing his own mother. Why investigators say this crime was premeditated. And a cool start to your work week, but that will soon burn off and a warming trend will be in effect. The UF weather team is tracking just how hot it's going to get. First at Five starts right now. First at Five, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. The highlight of many Americans' days today is the solar eclipse, which has been passing through our area for the last couple of hours. Welcome to WUFT's First at Five. I'm Sarah Sowers. And I'm Kennedy Mason. Watch parties across the U.S. assembled to view the totality, but here in Florida, we just caught a glimpse of the action. WUFT's Alex Land is live in the studio to tell us about how people in our community prepare to watch this nature phenomenon. Crowds of people from North Central Florida jumped at the chance to see the solar eclipse. We went to UF's Astronomy Teaching Observatory to witness the event that happens once in a blue moon. 12-year-old Matthew O'Neill convinced his mom to let him take a break from the books and watch the partial solar eclipse firsthand. These things don't happen every day and I thought it would just be cool to see. At 3.03 p.m., North Central Florida residents and University of Florida students like Max Rappaport were able to look up and see something out of this world. Last time there was an eclipse, I was in eighth grade. Now I'm in 14th grade, so I want to go see the moon cover the sun. We are here at the Astronomy Teaching Observatory where hundreds of community members are coming to get glasses and look up at the sun. A solar eclipse occurs when the moon passes in between the Earth and Sun and shields the Sun from view. UF Teaching Observatory Director Triana Almeida says the rarity of the event brought observers from near and far who were over the moon to witness this phenomenon. We have five solar telescopes out with our solar special solar filter that basically um, eliminates 99.9% .9 of the light so that way we could safely look at it without solar glasses. People were only able to see a partial eclipse locally, but those in what astronomers call the path of totality experienced a darkened sky, colder temperatures, and shining stars. <laughs> I'm actually excited that people took the time. It's in the middle of the day. I didn't think anyone would show up. They're at work, right? Like, nobody cares. And so I'm actually shocked people care, and it's really exciting, I think, for that. And I mean, I just love astronomy, so. And after today, she knows she's not alone in that. The next total solar eclipse that will be visible in the U.S. will take place in 2044. Live in the studio, Alex Land, WUFT News. A University of Florida student was arrested over the weekend after deputies in Polk County say he confessed to killing his own mother. Loved ones say 46-year-old Elvia Espinoza was a widely loved second grade teacher at Ben Hill Griffin Elementary School in Frostproof. That's just south of Lakeland. Investigators say Saturday, 21-year-old Emmanuel Espinoza drove to his mother's Polk County home from his Gainesville apartment. Then the pre-med student confessed to stabbing his mom multiple times while she was on a call with a family member. Then we asked him, what's your relationship with your mother? And he said about an eight out of 10, that he really loved her. But she irritated him and he made up his mind today on his way from Gainesville that he would murder her. And that's exactly what he did. Immediately after that crime, sheriffs say Espinoza called 911 and confessed. According to PCSO, Espinoza was booked in the Polk County Jail. He faces charges of tampering with evidence and first-degree murder. Newberry City leaders will convene in a commission meeting tonight. It's the first meeting since the city's mayor and commissioner were accused of unethical conduct involving the charter school conversion fight. We told you last week Mayor Jordan Marlowe and Commissioner Rick Coleman are accused of breaking state sunshine laws to push for the three schools to be converted to charter schools. The group Save Our Schools filed an ethics complaint on both men. They have both denied any wrongdoing. Tonight's meeting begins at 7. Deputies in Alachua County arrested a man they say was romantically involved with an underage girl. Donovan Grimes is charged with two counts of lewd and lascivious battery. Investigators say the victim was 15 years old when they began their relationship. Detectives say once the relationship was discovered, he was arrested. He's being held at the Alachua County bond without, without bond. A traffic stop in Putnam County set 
sent a deputy to the hospital after a device exploded an unknown substance. Charles Legault was stopped by the Putnam County Sheriff's Department Friday afternoon. Deputies say they discovered a firearm and drugs in the vehicle when an item exploded, covering the police officer in a powdery substance that the St. John's County Hazardous Materials Team says was chlorine-based. Legault was charged with aggravated battery on law enforcement, possession of, a law, of an explosive, and a weapons offense. It looks like we've got some beautiful weather on the Payne's Prairie DOT camera. Today's weather was perfect for the watching of an eclipse this afternoon. WFT's Morgan Plaka joins us now with how long this gorgeous weather will last. Yeah, Kennedy, so we did have a solar eclipse that came into the area that ended at around 4 p.m. and came in around 2. Now it's headed up to the northeast, and you can really see that cloud cover here in the New York and Washington, D.C. area, and that is when that solar eclipse is going to start to come into that area. Now temperatures in Gainesville are around the high 70s, 77 degrees in Gainesville, 78 degrees in Ocala, and 77 degrees in the villages, and it's just going to start to warm up in that area as well. Now having a look at our campus cam, it's pretty sunny outside 77 degrees feels like 79 with southeast winds coming in at eight miles per hour and coming up we do have warmer temperatures clear conditions and thursday showers coming in back to you five dogs in marion county are safe after firefighters pulled them from a burning home this morning Marion County Fire Rescue responded to an accidental home fire near South U.S. Highway 301. The homeowners escaped without any injuries, yet their pets remain trapped inside the structure barking for help. Officials say they rescued five dogs, but unfortunately a newborn puppy could not be located. There were no reports of injuries, according to officials. This Friday, Gainesville will celebrate 50 years of RTS. Our city's public transportation system originally began as a small private company in 1968 before becoming a public asset in 1974. Everyone is invited to the celebration event at the RTS Administration Building from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. The event will feature activities for kids, including a mini course on how to ride the bus. Today, RTS has more than 100 buses running along 39 routes, and there were over 5 million RTS passenger trips taken last fiscal year. Walking along the Hawthorne Trail is now even safer for neighbors in Gainesville. The Florida Department of Transportation has finished installing the pedestrian hybrid beacon along the Hawthorne Trail. The advanced crosswalk system operates using both vehicle and pedestrian signals to slow down traffic for safer crossings on Williston Road. This is the fourth pedestrian hybrid beacon to be installed in the Gainesville area since 2023. If you heard loud noises near the Ocala National Forest this morning, it's due to Navy bomb training. During the training exercises, wildlife was kept away from their safety and the Forest Service set up a perimeter for the Pine Castle Range Complex. The loud noises began around 10 a.m. and finished around noon. Florida's governor signed two new bills. One will ensure to bring a whole new protection for Florida's workers. A market displaying a collection of unusual items comes to Gainesville, from skulls to voodoo dolls. Stay tuned to learn what rarities you could find at this odd market. You're watching WUFT TV News. Earth Day celebrations took place all across the county over the weekend, including at the Santa Fe College Teaching Zoo. Organizers hosted their Party for the Planet Spring into Action event. WUFT's Sofia Mendez attended the event and is live in studio with the school's message to promote and protect wildlife. Being at Party for the Planet, I had the opportunity to talk to conservation and education curator Jade Woodling, who highlighted how special this event is than any other, as it allows the community to learn more about nature and how they can make a difference in it. We have a lot of initiatives here to get people to make a real difference for our planet. And that's why I love this event, because it really, really focuses on ways that people can get out in nature and make a difference directly. To bring the community all together, this fun-filled family event at the zoo provided an opportunity to explore the wonders of the animal kingdom while learning how to protect our planet through engaging activities and hands-on learning with zookeeper Clara Williams. Being able to touch the animals, I think, really helps them form a bond. 
to the animal. A lot of people feel more of an emotional connection with animals that they're closer to. One of the main focuses of Party for the Planet was to create awareness and educate people through bringing various environmental organizations that do things for nature to inspire and build sustainable practices. Party for the Planet brought people together who care about the environment and created a sense of community around conservation with many parents excited for their kids eager to learn more about the planet. I want them to be aware, you know, of the environment. Like, yes, we're, um, they're growing up here, but there's also like a, a lot of other opportunities, you know, to kind of explore and getting to know their environment a little bit better. Party for the Planet provided the perfect opportunity to help better the bond between people and our planet through organizations, zookeeper talks, and interactive activities. Live in the studio, Sofia Mendez, WUFT News. Governor Ron DeSantis signed seven bills Friday, one of which shines a light on child vehicle safety. House Bill 591, also known as ARIA's Act, designates April as Hot Car Death Prevention Month. The bill aims to bring awareness to the dangers of leaving children unattended in vehicles, as well as the penalties associated with the crime and how bystanders can help rescue children. The bill goes into effect in July of this year. DeSantis also signed House Bill 241, which allows state employees to receive free skin cancer checks through their insurance. The bill requires that state group health insurance plans must cover the, annu the costs of annual skin cancer screenings, including any co-pays. The bill goes into effect in July of this year, but insurance providers have until January 1st of 2025 to cover the screenings. If you've noticed a few more bats than usual around your neighborhood, you may want to check out your attics before bat maternity season begins. FWC officials say bats will typically roost in trees and caves, but you may find them in abandoned homes and even your attic. If you do not want bats roosting in your home, you must have them safely removed before the season begins on April 16th. For more information on removing bats and how to keep bats out of your home, you can visit myfwc.com bats. A new market full of peculiarities is taking over the Gainesville community. The Oddities Market hosted its first event Sunday in Gainesville. The Ocala-based market had live music, food, and vendors selling all things odd. In 2022, co-owner of the Oddities Market, Matthew Gray, debuted the market in downtown Ocala. Since then, vendors have grown and so has the partnership. Co-owner and longtime market vendor Allison Doughty has seen the impact the market has had within the different communities they visit. A really great thing about the Oddities Market is it's a mix of people, it's a mix of art. Um, it gives the kind of underdog artists or new artists a place to sell their wares and be on display. With the Gainesville opening, the Oddities Market now has four locations and plans to expand. The next Oddities Market will take place May 5th at Bo Diddley Plaza. Temperatures are starting to warm up this week and Thursday we're going to see some showers. I'll tell you a little bit about that coming up next. You're watching WUFT-TV News. It's looking absolutely sunny and nice outside. Temperatures around 78 degrees. Does feel like 79 with winds coming around at 8 miles per hour in Gainesville right now. Temperatures are in north central Florida are in the high 70s. 77 degrees in Gainesville, 78 degrees in Ocala, and 78 degrees in the villages where it's going to start to warm up for the rest of the week as well. Now we can really see that 24 hour temperature change right now here in Lake City, 7 degrees, Gainesville, 6 degrees, and even in St. Augustine, we have a 7 degree change and it's just going to get warmer as the week goes on. Now the dew point temperature is the measure of moisture in the atmosphere and dew point temperatures are going to increase when those rain chances start to come in on Thursday, bringing dew point temperatures to 61 and 60 on Friday on Friday and then they're going to start to cool down and we're not going to feel as muggy um, when that rain starts to go away. Now Monday and Tuesday it's looking pretty low for our pollen, but Wednesday we're going to feel a little bit more pollen in the area. So if you're coughing and sneezing, it's probably because it's allergies season and that pollen is really in the area as of right now. Now let's have a look at the rest of the night. It's going to be pretty warm at 6 p.m. 80 degrees going to feel breezy and then it's going to start to cool down as the as the night goes on with those overnight lows at 62 degrees and then get warm tomorrow. Now Wednesday we're going to see a 
An isolated enhanced risk here in Jackson and New Orleans of thunderstorms and rain here in the Panhandle. And then in Tallahassee, a scattered slight risk of rain coming into that area. And then those showers are going to start to hit the Panhandle on Wednesday. And you can really see that rain chances start to come in in the area. Here's Wednesday at 7 p.m. when they start to come into Tallahassee. And then in North Central Florida, they're also going to start to come in. Now, on Saturday, we do have the orange and blue game, and that's awesome because the weather is going to be great. 10 a.m., it's going to we're going to wake up in the 60s, and then at 1 p.m. when kickoff starts, it's going to be 75 degrees. So come watch the Gators play the Gators, and it's going to be nice and sunny and sunny for the orange and blue game. Now here's a look at the rest of the week. We are going to see temperatures uh, pretty high on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then those rain chances are going to start to come in on Thursday. Temperatures at 80 degrees, and then it's going to be pretty warm as well for the rest of the week with temperatures in the high. 80s. Back to you. You're watching WUFT TV News. It's that time again. Happy Monday. As always, I'm Alexis Vivanco. Gators softball looks to end their no longer weekend series against LSU on a high note. That's right, Alexis. Florida looks to clinch its SEC series against LSU tonight in front of their home crowd. The series begins Saturday with Florida defeating the then number five Tigers 4-2, to two, making it the highest ranked team Florida has beaten so far this season. Florida will look to swing things back in their direction in just a few hours. The game will begin tonight at 7. Live from Katie Seashell Presley Stadium, Kaylin Sims, WUFT News. Florida kicked off the weekend sitting at number six in the national rankings, but after less than an ideal weekend against Mizzou, the Gators now find themselves almost out of the NCAA Top 25 hanging on by one spot in the D1 baseball poll. Florida will have a chance to get back in the swing of things on the road versus FSU tomorrow. And the stage is officially set for the men's end for the, this year's NCAA men's basketball tournament, with the UConn Huskies squaring off against the, the Purdue Boilermakers. The final four slate of games saw Purdue make light work of NC State, ending their Cinderella run 63-50. On the other end, a similar tale was told as the Nate Oates coach Bama team got mauled by UConn 86-72. The final matchup of the tournament tips off tonight at 920. In some more college hoops news, Florida's Walter Clayton Jr. will be entering his name into this year's NBA draft, but will maintain eligibility to return to the University of Florida. And guys, let me tell you, it was a fantastic season, but unfortunately, great things can't last forever. Yeah, just like that solar eclipse today. I mean, I'm going to be so old when 2044 <laughs> comes around for the next one. Right, I guess we'll just have to take a road trip all together. I'll call you up, don't worry. Perfect. We'll go up to North Dakota or wherever we can Sounds see it in North amazing. America. <laughs> good plan, good plan. Alrighty, and let's take one last check on the weather before we go. What's it looking like this week? Yeah, so temperatures are looking pretty warm Tuesday and Wednesday when they get up to 86 degrees here on Wednesday. And then on Thursday is when those showers really start to come in. Temperatures also at 80 degrees. And then it's going to start to, those showers are going to go away and it's going to start to warm even more this weekend. Alrighty, thanks so much for joining us. We're back here tomorrow for another edition of First at Five. That's right, but your North Central Florida news is always on at WUFT.org and all of our social media platforms. Have a good night. Thanks for joining us.